We're ready for our first example here. We're given a free fall function. Uh, this is in feet per second after the first t seconds. A lot of times you'll see a negative 16 t squared because it's falling down, so the height is decreasing. Uh, if it's positive, this is just the number of feet it has fallen after t seconds. This doesn't really make sense once t is negative. And I want to know what's the average speed for the first two seconds. So that'll be between t equals 0 and t equals 2. So this is for t in the interval 0 comma 2. Now this in right here, we're going to replace it with an epsilon. And the epsilon means in. So this means the t value is between 0 and 2. So using the notation before, t0, the initial time, is 0. The end time, t1, is 2. So it's from 0 seconds to 2 seconds. We were given the units for time are in seconds here. Uh, the units for distance are in feet. All right, we have our formula we're going to apply next. So average rate of change is f of t1 minus f of t, oops, t, t0 divided by t1 minus t0. All right, plugging these values in. So it's f of 2 minus f of 0. So what is f of 2? Our function is right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug in what's f of 2 and f of 0. We'll compute those separately and then plug in the values down here in a second. All right, this formula is pretty easy to plug into. 16 times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4 times 16 is 64. Uh, f of 0, uh, you're going to get 16 times 0 squared, which is just 0. All right, your homework question is probably going to be slightly more compli complicated formula, and I just use slightly easier ones in the example, so we don't spend too much time on computation here. So again, the first one, f of 2, that's this value right here, that's 64. f of t0, that's f of 0. And you can see again, t0 is labeled right here, f of 0 is labeled right here, and that's going right in for that. So you should be able to see all of this on your paper matching up. So that's minus 0 divided by t1. That's 2 minus t0, which is 0. So we have 64 divided by 2 is 32. Uh, so it's the average speed. Uh, and our units, we have feet divided by seconds. So if you want to label with units, that's feet over seconds. In my class, I'm not super into units. If you take physics or, or science in general, units are a big deal. So it is, I will talk about units on occasion, but uh, I, I generally won't give grades for units in a calculus in a math class, but it is good to be aware, especially if you're going on to science. So that was the average rate of speed. It's also known as the average uh, rate of change. In this case, the rate of change of position. Uh, and that was between 0 and 2. We're going to now do the same problem between 1 and 2. So if you followed along pretty well, I encourage you to pause the video here and try to compute the average rate of change between 1 and 2 right now. It's almost identical, slightly different values. So now I'm going to work through it. And I'm going to relabel t0 and t1. t0 is 0. t1 is 2. My t's are getting a bit sloppy here. All right. Jeez, that's not right. t0 is 1. t1 is 2. OK. All right, so average rate of change. f t1 minus f t0 divided by t1 minus t0. OK. We computed f of 2 already, and that was 64. Uh, what is f of 1? So that function, you might need to relook at that. 16 times 1 squared. 
16 times 1 is 16 divided by t1 is now uh, 2 and t0 is 1. 64 minus 16 is something. I want to say 48. Hopefully I'm right. Divided by 2 minus 1 is 1. So we get 48. Okay. So you can see the average rate of change or average rate of speed is faster between 1 and 2 seconds compared to 0 and 2 seconds. So what is happening here? Well, this is the free fall equation. So an item is falling, it starts out not moving at zero seconds. And as time goes on, it falls faster and faster and faster and faster. So zero to two seconds, the average speed between zero and two is gonna be lower than the average speed between one and two. Uh, what we're leading up to is what is the instantaneous speed at two? And there's a few ways to do it. One way, if I want to know the instantaneous speed at t equals 2, I could look at t in between uh, 1.9 or even 1.99 or 1.999 and 2. So now I've moved these t values very close together. And if I do this computation, I will get an answer that's very close to the instantaneous speed at t equals 2. And if I notice a pattern, if I put in more nines, uh, I might notice a pattern and be able to guess at what the actual instantaneous speed is. Some homework questions are going to walk you through this process where you're going to pick values that are super close to each other. But what we're going to do next is uh, actually compute the instantaneous speed uh, using the difference quotient. So we'll get that in the next video.